Gawig si Kukun, New Pack for Ice Bridges. In February of 2019, members of the Akagvik Sikakun team and members of the Moore Foundation, our funding organization, got together in Palisades, New York at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University. We set aside three days worth of meetings now that we were just past the midway point of our four year long project. But as a documentary filmmaker, I also wanted to capture footage of what our Columbia University team members do when not at a research site in Kotzebue. Every team member and participant plays an important role, and I was grateful to meet with the engineer who designs and fabricates our custom UAV components. We're here in the machine shop of the Lamont campus of Columbia University, and in this facility, we design and manufacture all of the custom components used in the UAVs as, as part of this project. This is Lamont's uh, computer-controlled milling machine. It's used to create uh, from solid aluminum blocks or solid plastic blocks. We use various cutting tools to cut large blocks down into the lightweight custom mounts you see on all of our UAV payloads. This is the control system for the CNC milling machine. All of these buttons are used to make the cutters on the milling machine uh, move to cut whatever profile we're looking for or drill holes. I can make programs on the computer in my office, put them on a floppy disk and upload them uh, into the computer on this machine and with the push of a button uh, make the various parts you see on the UAV payloads. These are manual milling machines that uh, we use by hand to perform the same functions as we would with our computer-controlled modern CNC machines. Oftentimes when we're working with uh, parts that we've just finished and they need minor changes, we can quickly set them up on the manual machines and more quickly um, make whatever modifications we need or just if we're working on small projects, sometimes the manual machine is a little more convenient to get parts set up on and get working on them. This is a horizontal milling machine. We can put larger parts, something like the entire nose of one of our UAV payloads into this vise and conveniently hold it so that we can add uh, various uh, holes or apertures for each of our instruments and probes. Even though this is an older machine, we've modernized it with a very accurate digital readout, which as we move the machine, it tells us to the nearest thousandth of an inch where we're located on the table of the milling machine. Because this machine is fairly large, all of these levers are used to quickly move the table or the spindle or the cutting head in various directions so that we can position the cutting tools where we need them to modify whatever piece we're working on for the UAV payloads. This is a test pool in the ocean testing facility at the Lamont campus of Columbia. And on this project, we've used the pool to test the dynamics of the buoy itself, how it floats with a buoy that's only the size of a couple of soda cans. It's fairly difficult to design it in a way that it stays upright and also doesn't leak. And with this pool, we have performed various drop tests and put in various iterations of our uh, small buoys to uh, improve them and make sure that they'll work uh, when they go out in the field. We're in my office at the Lamont Machine Shop and in here on my computer, I can model in a 3D CAD computer-aided design program all of the various pieces that we put into the UAV payloads. For the second field season, I've been asked to incorporate a small uh, temperature uh, and pressure and humidity sensor. Uh, it's made up of this circuit board as well as the temperature probe itself. And so this presented a challenge in that we needed to mount this probe directly to the skin of the nose and we wanted to create a single unit that could be moved uh, between noses and was compact enough that it could fit with any of the various payloads that 
uh, we're working with. We first modeled each of the components individually. So we took the general dimensions of the board and made a matching model that we could then put into the nose and move it around and find the best place for it without actually having to build anything. When we import the part, we can uh, make various decisions about whether we want the part to be hollow or have a solid fill. Uh, we can decide how thick we want each of the layers to be. And all that goes into determining how quickly the part prints and how strong it will be when it is used in the aircraft. We can actually look at each layer of the part individually. Our 3D printer prints only in a nylon base material and this black material that we use has been infused with bits of carbon fiber. This came in particularly handy on the UAV project in the Metflux payload, the hygrometer mount was actually printed on this printer, and it's a large probe that sticks out the nose of the vehicle, so we wanted to make it as rigid as possible, and just filling it with carbon fiber helped to do that. In the tight spaces that we have in our UAVs, it's important that each part comes out exactly to the dimensions that we specify them to. After we've looked through all of the layers of the part, we can print it. And now two hours after we started the print, our part is finished and we can mount our instruments into the UAV nose. It was eye-opening to see and hear how our custom UAV components are designed, tested, and engineered. Our UAVs have specific needs based on the length they fly, severe weather conditions, and accommodating for all the scientific instruments we use in the UAVs. As we use the instrumentation, the team is always considering if improvements need to be made, and Ryan's custom engineered components are crucial to the success of the functionality within the UAV systems. <laughs>